Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Vega Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And this is... The Summer of Sylvester Stallone! And this week, we're looking at Rambo 3. One of the most expensive, one of the most violent, and the movie where the Guinness World Record for the body count rises. Rambo 3 certainly left its mark on the world, just as John Rambo left the world a smoldering wasteland. While Rambo only killed one man accidentally in first blood, officially anyway, he alone is responsible for 78 of the 132 kills in this movie. This is quite obviously the biggest budget Rambo movie ever made, with $63 million in 1988. 12 million of which was to pay Stallone in a jet. He asked for it. But how to continue the Rambo saga after he frees the POWs in Vietnam? Simple. Ignore that plot point entirely and move on to Afghanistan. As it's the 80s, the enemy are the evil Russians, who have engaged in unthinkable activities, invading Afghanistan and killing its inhabitants who are just trying to heroically fight off their oppressors. So... I... Let's start the review. The first order of business is to find out where in the hell Rambo is. This seems to be a big problem, as even Troutman has to ask the locals where in the world is Rambo Stallone's ego. <laughs> Easiest scavenger hunt ever. He ain't no Waldo. Troutman finds Rambo engaged in a sport. A sport of blood. A blood sport, if you will. Body's ready, my heart's on fire. Stallone, wrong movie! I paid 15 bucks to get in, I want my money's worth. Of course, the scene is just to establish that Rambo is a strong fighter, because the last two movies and killing 59 people weren't a big enough hint. Amidst the cheers of his victory, he doesn't notice Troutman in the crowd. John! So, either he wants his help, or he's pissed off because he bet on the other guy. No bother, since he spotted the monks Rambo left with, that means Troutman can track the man down at the nearby temple. John! John Rambo! Yeah, how the hell did you survive that jump, Rambo? I'm Rambo. Good point. Of course, they make the obligatory small talk going over the eight minutes of movie we just watched. I just do that for a little extra money. Yeah, I, uh, saw you give it to the monks. You see a lot? I see everything, John. But he's also got to introduce the minor but important character, Robert Griggs, played by Kurtwood Smith. He goes over the horrors of the war in Afghanistan, far worse than what you've seen on that 70s show. Mostly peasant farmers and their families have been systematically slaughtered by invading Russian armies. Russian armies! Russian, it's the Russian armies. Right. But it's not all bad. The U.S. has been helping out. The Afghan forces are now getting shipments of Stinger missiles and are beginning to hold their own against airstrikes. Yeah, actually that did happen. Russia was invading Afghanistan and the U.S. did help out the local Afghanistan forces by providing them with Stinger missiles, such as the heroic freedom fighters like... Taliban. For the sake of this movie, though, there is one region they're having some trouble with, because an especially brutal Soviet commander somehow means Stinger missiles stop working. Thus, they need to send in a special squad. They've asked me to go in. You're not going to do it. Yes. I should have retired from combat years ago, but, well, this kind of crap works in the Expendables, so why not? He wants Rambo to back him up, but John's retired. What's that mean? It means my war is over. Uh... It's over! Nothing is over! Did one movie and 58 bodies change this? Come with me, John. As fun as that sounds, Rambo still refuses to partake in brutal warfare, even for Troutman. Why would Rambo not want to go Rambo? Simple. When making a sequel, always stick to the hero's journey as strictly as possible. Step one, we have Rambo in the ordinary world far from unscheduled conflicts, which is broken up by the call to adventure. Which you'd think Rambo would be all for, but the hero's journey dictates he refuses the call. So yeah, the start sticks to the template pretty strictly, but what about the rest of the film? Hey! 
Sorry. <sighs> I swear, you get up one second for tea and someone hijacks your show. Without Rambo's help, Trotman heads off to Afghanistan to deliver Stinger missiles to the Freedom Fighters. But this, strangely enough, doesn't go according to plan. So, are we fighting the hill or... Oh, shit! Take cover! You have no chance of escape! Drop your weapon! Logic dictates that Russian forces invading Afghanistan fighting Afghani forces would obviously speak English. Something went wrong. What happened? It turns out sending a 62-year-old man with a squad just out of the academy is not the best strategy. Griggs has come to tell Rambo that they aren't doing shit about this. I just thought you should know. You seemed happy and content with your life. I hate that. Can you get me in? It can't be done officially. You make it unofficial. Or artificially? Jack me into the Matrix. So Rambo is shipped off to Pakistan, because we seem to have a problem sending troops to Afghanistan and not neighboring countries. And he meets up with his contact, Masoud, played by Spiros Fokas, in a leg and gun shop. Many landmines. Landmines everywhere. We also used to sell bomb dogs, but ran out last week. Here he gets supplied with fuck tons of C4 and glow sticks. What does this one? It's a blue light. What does it do? Turns blue. Going on the rave! Good, here we have many raves. Do you know what happens when you give a camel ecstasy? Mike, 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 Mike! What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Can you tell me how many more men come with us? There's no rescue team, it's just me. Just you? Come on, this is no good. We need more men for the rave. And women. Many women. Masada is disappointed that the rescue team consists entirely of Rambo, because he does not yet realize the value of a Rambo. The guy sweats napalm. Trotman, on the other hand, is sweating bullets, being interrogated by Colonel Zason, played by Marc De Jong. Not to say Trotman doesn't maintain his defiance. You talk peace and disarmament to the world, and here you are wiping out a race of people. <coughs> They'd rather die than be slaves to an invading army. You can't defeat a people like that. <coughs> Moving on! As we see Rambo and Masada have made it all the way to the Planet of the Apes and have reached the Forbidden Zone, Masada takes a break from talking about drugs and partying to mention the history of invaders that Afghanistan has fought off. But Afghan people fight hard. They never be defeated. Aww, uh, isn't this a pretty cat? Such a lovely, distracting cat. Their conversation is interrupted by the revelation that Soviet forces are flying nearby. Not to worry, for they just so happen to be near Masada's fave rave cave, which connects to the path they were taking anyway. How convenient! In ancient days, the Afghan king was asked to send 500 of his warriors into battle. He sent only five, and they won. Have you ever seen the movie 300? It was just like that. Trapman, however, is now being tortured in the hopes that it will make him reveal the location of the missiles. Where are the missiles located? Close. How close? In your ass. Of course. Never have thought to check. Hey, wait a minute! This is getting a little repetitive, though, so convenient espionage lets the Russians know that Rambo is coming for them. Later, first he has to stop off in the village of Freedom Fighters. It's the last village in the valley. About 100 men here. Sadly, the war has made this strictly business. No raves. The acid, she does not flow here. They go over the layout of the Soviet base and the plan of attack. As Rambo's suggestion to just have two guys drop him off at the front door doesn't get cheers, he goes for plan B. Then I'll go alone. And you will die. Bitch, I'm Rambo. They don't throw the idea out, however, after an inspiring speech about the independence and heroism of the Afghan people. Heroism that extends to its children, such as Hamid, played by Dodi Shoa, if my research is correct. Someone they're spending way too much time establishing, so we can look forward to them being in the rest of this movie. What is this? Nice. Can you see this? Sure. You got a fucking rifle, what do you need a knife for? But hey, they still have a few hours to kill, so why not enjoy a game of goat polo? I'll take football. Football? What's football? You play it with your foot? No, you play it with freedom! Somehow they think they stand a chance playing against Rambo, riding Indiana Jones' fucking horse. Unfortunately, we'll never find out as the game is rudely interrupted by the big bad Russians. <laughs> Ah! 
Wait a minute. I'm so conflicted. How about we forget we ever saw that? Besides, Machine Gun Jesus himself, Rambo, proves his body impervious to helicopter fire, whilst the helicopters are not impervious to him. Because fuck you, he's Rambo. But he can't take out the big baddie just yet. We're only at the 45 minute mark. Thus he solid snakes away long enough for the alert to expire. Now you see how it is here. Somewhere in the war, there's supposed to be honor. Where is the honor here? I want to fight. That was me. You go. Rambo, you are my role model. What other options are there? At this point, Rambo heads to the Soviet base, along with Massoud, sneaking through the minefield and stopping every few feet to check for oil. Unfortunately, some jackass has booby-trapped the field, making this task harder than it has to be. You may be wondering how the hell Hamid ran through a minefield without blowing up. It's simple, he has a light step perk. Rambo doesn't understand that children are simply invulnerable and tells Hamid to run back across the minefield and go home. He's got to slip into base with Massoud, setting explosives and sneaking ever closer to the building. That, uh, that, that's not sneaking, Rambo. This stunt gets him closer, right in the view of three guys, but they're out of focus, so he's fine. The Russians seem to keep most of their patrols out in the open instead of on the base itself, allowing Rambo to penetrate the walls, finding captive women. American. American. That won't really make them feel that much safer. Oh, he's asking them to point him in the direction of an American, allowing him to quickly locate Troutman and complete the staring contest they never finished. Can you move? You're damn right I can. Rambo, I haven't slept in three months. I will never need to blink again. But before he can free Troutman, the kid shows up and somehow aggros all the Russian guards, because why not? This results in the most violent game of peekaboo I've ever seen. At this point, everything starts blowing the fuck up. Of course, no one can land even a flesh wound on Rambo, but not everyone is Rambo. Yeah! I mean... Oh... Oh my god, the Russians have access to the Needler from Halo! As the shit has hit the fan, he must escape, throwing a grenade at the door that explodes from inside, making that kind of a waste. Nevertheless, Rambo, Massoud, and Hamid escape into the sewer. Which seems less than optimal, considering that grievous wounds, but oh well. Rambo, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but this is no time for a rave! That's the least of their problems, as a big pile of shit isn't enough to stop the Russian army. Come on, get down! 29 seconds? Don't worry, kid doesn't need to breathe. That takes care of the pursuers, and a quick strength roll takes care of the last obstacle. But before they can escape on horseback, there is one more thing Rambo has to deal with. Where did he get the rocket launcher from? He's fucking Rambo! This allows them to escape, and Rambo decides that the others should head to Pakistan, despite the kid wanting to stick around and die. I see you again? No. I, I, I don't need your merchandise, Rambo. Now that they're gone, we see how Rambo's wound is doing. Or maybe this is the Rambo action figure where you push the button and he talks, so, although all this one says is Arrgh! Okay, now he's reloading himself? Man make fire, fire make man. Uh, I, I know what it is to cauterize a wound, but I'm pretty sure that stunt would have just made it worse. Come morning, the Russians are on the hunt for Rambo, decked out in shitty camouflage based on low-quality Polaroids of the real thing, and wearing Ushankas in Afghanistan, because heat stroke is fun. <laughs> Fuck was he going for the turret for? Doesn't he have a sidearm that could have killed Rambo? Or 
distracted him and made him slow down and then shoot him with an exploding arrow. One or the other! Rambo must hurry as the Russians are turning up the heat on Troutman. You handle stretching. You laugh at electricity. But can you take s'mores? Nothing a stab in the ass can't fix, meaning Rambo and Troutman are back together at last, freeing the hostages and running off into the sunset together. Can you fly that thing? I am motherfucking Rambo. This would be the screamy, explodey, enemy-based destruction via helicopter scene, except this particular chopper is one of those extra fragile ones, taking heavy damage from infantry fire. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, and pull up! They do survive the crash landing, giving him a huge explosion to run away from. Of course, their group is a bit too large with all these survivors, so Troutman and Rambo just leave their asses and run off on their own, laying low while the Russians desperately search Tatooine for their prey. How's the wound? You taught us to ignore pain, didn't you? Is it working? You also taught us to ignite gunpowder in the wounds. So now... Look out, though, the Russians are near, so throwing a bow together ridiculously fast... No, please! Arrow wasn't even flying straight! It's not fair! Problem is, there's still one left, and he only had time to make one arrow and an entire compound bow. So plan B, Rambo go down the hole. We don't want to make it easy for him. We'd better split up. Now, before you say, hold on, he's clearly got at least two more exploding arrows right there. Yeah, right there. He obviously made them after jumping down the hole. It makes perfect sense. No time to rest, though, as the Russians are coming down to fight in the ancient cave. Which, based on the markings on the walls, is clearly a modern mine. <laughs> what? Is blue to Russians like red is to bulls? Rambo mops up the remaining goons while Trotman escapes, making sure they are arbitrarily separated by a good distance before anything major happens. <laughs> Damn, indoor to outdoor transitions are anything but smooth. Every fucking time! Only to run into a spawn camping asshole, of course! But these sweaty, manly men won't let anything stand in their way and... Victory! Victory in a fight to the death! Jeez. Which Rambo secures, obviously, but this is certainly worth mentioning, as he wraps rope around his opponent's neck, pulls a pin on a grenade, then kicks him, hangs him, and blows him up. Seriously. Rambo in Mortal Kombat. Do it! Problem is, this was just a mini-boss. Turns out the last level of this little adventure concludes with one of those endurance runs with shit-tons of enemies, and the final boss. Whatever shall they do? What do you say, John? Fuck him. Just go fucking Rambo and kill everyone. Wouldn't want it any other way. Things still look dire for our lone two fighters, but don't worry, the ever-heroic Afghani forces are here to save the Americans and show their fighting spirit is undefeatable. Now nothing can stop them! <sighs> You're fine, just hide behind a wooden crate for ten seconds. Amidst the chaos of blood, death, and explosions, Rambo commandeers a Russian tank. Normally a vehicle like this takes like five people to operate, but he's Rambo. This brings us to our final standoff. Rambo in a Russian tank, and Zaisen in the Aristotle SA-330 Puma that we're pretending is a Russian gunship. Why didn't Zaisen just fly up and bomb his ass? How the hell did our hero survive? Because it's fucking Rambo! This brings our story to a close with the evil Russian general defeated, the heroic Afghani forces successful, and Rambo moving on to be a spokesperson for L'Oreal. Because he's worth it. And now that we are finally free, Was Rambo 3. It's alright. 
While it's got a bigger body count than the previous film, and the stakes were objectively higher, plus they threw Troutman in even more danger than in First Blood Part 2, I can't help but feel this movie came off uh, as more of the same. It's entertaining enough in its own right, but it doesn't really feel that much different from the second. The conflict is new, relatable to this time, and very damn awkward nowadays, but outside of switching up the location from jungle to desert, and adhering even more to the hero's journey, a lot of the big scenes in this movie felt like remixes of scenes from First Blood Part 2. In that sense, it's a good thing they switched locations, or else it could have been very confusing. That being said, I don't think that Rambo 3 is quite as bad as many make it out to be. It's definitely not nearly as noteworthy as the previous two films, but it's still a competently assembled work. The acting is solid, the vistas are good, and the spectacle is decent. It's an adequate movie. The problem is it's just about all you can say about it, outside of the record high body count and violent acts. I don't know if I've been doing this too long, but I wouldn't have known unless you told me. At the end of the day, Rambo 3 is a decent film for fans of the second, but wouldn't do much for fans of the first who are looking for a movie to go above and beyond the Call of Duty. This flick does a damn good job of giving us a generic sequel, but that's all it really does, coming in at three wobbly arrows of death out of five. While it marked the end of the Rambo franchise, until recently anyway, that may have less to do with the quality of the film itself, and more to the fact that at the time, moviegoers were being bombarded with sequel after sequel after sequel, and after a while, they stopped buying into that shit. Thank you all for watching, I've been Decker Shadow, and remember, Rambo's sweat does melt steel beams. in your ass.